Over the years, really, I've heard many good things about St. Stanislaus. And I just want to say that it's an honor to be here with you today. But a special joy to be here for, the, for your baptism and your confirmation, really. It's a special joy. I will share this experience, really, this weekend here at St. Stanislaus with friends. I, I go back to Georgia, where I'm based, and I will share this with family and friends. But I, I grew up in a very small town in Louisiana right along the Mississippi River there, and most of us were Catholics. And I remember so well when I was growing up, our priest told us about this love of God. We had loving parents, but he, we heard how this loving God was so unconditional. There were no limits, as Father Mark said. There, there were no limits to this love as a parent would have for the child, God's love is evermore. And how this loving, all-loving God created all of us of equal worth and dignity. There are no exceptions. In the eyes of God, we are all special, special. But I'm sad to say that in our community, in our church there, we did not live this out. I can remember going for 12 years to a public school. We had no African-American students there. It was segregated. I remember so well in our church, not this large, in our Catholic church, when we gathered to worship this all-loving God, our African-American Catholics had to sit in the last pews of the church. And I cannot recall our priest, a teacher at our school, a parent, or us young people, myself included, whoever spoke out and said, we have a problem here. We are not living out this love that you talk about, that we profess, this love of God for us in our equality. It's called racism. Racism, it's wrong. It's not the way of God. And we try to justify our prejudice by saying it's our tradition. We even went to the Bible and found certain quotes to try to justify our segregation. We said we were separate but equal. It didn't work. It didn't work. No matter how hard we may try to justify discrimination against others because of their race, their gender, their sexual orientation, it is not the way of God who loves us equally. My ticket, I'm happy to say though that today our schools are segregated. Our church, of course, we're all together. Our African-American members can sit in the front. I mean, today, it's the way it should be, and I'm very proud to go back to my hometown True, there are still remnants of racism, but we have our church segregated, our school segregated. And that's the way it should be. My ticket out of my little town was the military. I spent four years in the military as a young officer and volunteered to go off to the war in Vietnam. And that became my turning point in life the madness of the war, the violence, losing friends there, wounded there, God became much more important in my life. Death was close. And I began to feel that God was calling me to be a priest. And I entered a missionary order when I left the military, the Marino Fathers, 
missionaries working in Africa, Asia, Latin America. I was a dying Dane way back in 1972. And as a priest, I found the peace, the joy, the meaning I was seeking in life. I was sent to serve the poor in Bolivia. And this slum on the outskirts of La Paz was my home for the next five years. Bolivia is a very poor country. It was being ruled by a dictator, General Banzer. It saddened me to see my country, the United States, giving guns to those soldiers who were oppressing the poor, exploiting their cheap labor. They were being paid a dollar a day. They didn't have schools for their children. Their children were hungry. Many dying before the age of three or four. And we were there exploiting their resources of the country. It was wrong. And I and many spoke out. Many of my people there that I served were being arrested. Some were being killed for speaking out for food for their children. And in my fifth year speaking out with them, I was arrested and I was expelled from the country and came home and became very involved in our missionary work in El Salvador where Bishop Romero was assassinated at the altar while saying mass. And there were four church women, two of them Merino nuns, good friends of ours, who were killed, raped and killed by the Salvadoran soldiers. And when we went to El Salvador to try and find out how could this happen, we found once again our country giving guns to those soldiers doing the killing. It was so similar to Bolivia, exploiting people's cheap labor and taking their resources from them. It was wrong. And what we found out was that those who killed Bishop Romero, the church women, and soon later the Jesuits at the university there, the Jesuit University in San Salvador, with a young mother and her 15-year-old daughter, those responsible were trained at the School of the Americas at Fort Benning, Georgia, in our country. And I and others went there to say, no, no, not in our name will you do this. We protested. We formed an organization called the School of the Americas Watch. And we started with just a dozen people, really, speaking out about that school, saying it should be closed. It's our tax money supporting this school and those soldiers, over 50,000 from 20 countries in Latin America being trained here, went back to their countries and caused a lot of suffering and death. And our movement grew from just a dozen to a thousand to 10,000, 20,000. And today we're still trying to close that school. Five countries have pulled out and we have a website soaw.org, soaw.org for more information. In November, we're going to be at the border expressing our solidarity and love with the, uh, the, our migrant sisters and brothers, our undocumented who are being treated so uh, cruelly with so little compassion. And it's wrong. We will be there to speak for them. But it was in this work of the School of the Americas Watch, giving talks in churches and colleges that I met many women, devout Catholic women, who told me about their call to be a priest. God was calling them, but they were rejected because they were women. And I must say, this really kept me awake at night. I began to realize as a priest that this was a grave injustice against God who are calling these women, who created us equal. <clears throat> and I began to ask, who are we as men to say that our call from God to be a priest is authentic, but your call as women is not? This is wrong. This is not the way of God. And I spoke out, and this upset the patriarchy, the all clerical male culture longtime friends who I, I thought would support the ordination of women, 
did not. And I continued to speak out and received an invitation. There are many women who are being ordained. Among them was my good friend, Reverend Jan Janis, who invited me to attend her ordination. And it was an honor to go to her ordination. There was so much joy, friends coming together to welcome, to, to say, yes, Janice, we, 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 we are with you. And to give thanks to God for calling Janice. But this got me in big trouble. I received a letter from the Vatican saying that I had 30 days to recant, to say that I do not believe God calls women to be priests. If I did not recant, I would be excommunicated. I could not recant. It went against my conscience, against my faith. <coughs> and then it didn't take long after I received the letter from Pope Benedict. Because of my refusal to recant, I was kicked out of the priesthood, expelled, excommunicated. And I must say, this is very, very painful for me. As a priest for 40 years, I had hoped that so many of my close priest friends would support me in calling for the ordination, but I was mistaken. In our church, we have what we call the patriarchy. It is dominated by men, and this is wrong. It's that sin of sexism that's at work here. And this is not the way of God, but of little men, really, who are threatened by women see a threat to their power and privileges, and this is wrong. And I have no doubt, my hope comes from the women's ordination movement today and young people and older people who believe that God calls both men and women and all of us, really, to be priests. I have no regrets, I must say, as hard as it was, I've gotten a glimpse of what so many people, millions of people in our world, in our church, go through in the way of rejection because of their race, their gender, their sexual orientation. But I'm filled with hope because I see our church and so many people, especially younger people, seeing this love of God and how we are all created equal. And in closing, I just want to say I wish you well in your journey. You here at St. Stanislaus gives me a lot of hope in this struggle for equality, for peace and justice. Congratulations in your good work. And let's keep working for a world of peace and love, knowing that God is always calling us to love one another, to treat one another as sisters and brothers, as equals. And you've got a wonderful family here, and may God bless you. Thank you.